Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cope Life Podcast. Thank you for being here. I am Dr. Charleston Gaines, and I'm so excited to be here talking to you guys today. And I'm really just grateful for all of you guys who are supporting me, whether you are watching live or if you're going to watch or listen to the replay. You know, I go live every Monday at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram. I love going live. I love providing you guys with this material, with this content, this value. And also, when I'm done here, I do post a video of this on my YouTube channel. And on YouTube, you can just look for Dr. Charleston Gaines. And then also, I post the audio of my podcast everywhere that you can listen to and consume podcasts. So I'm just sharing my content, sharing my mindset, my thoughts, my perspective on all things cope life, because that's what we're really trying to do here is to build a community where we choose to live a life of kindness, optimism, positivity, and empathy. That's what a cope life is. And today I'm really excited about the topic I'm going to be discussing, which is getting to I am enough. We often don't do that enough. We often talk about things like I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough, strong enough, fine enough, tall enough on all of these things that we judge ourselves. And we think about what it would feel like to be enough. We think about what it would feel like to be good enough, but we don't know how to get there. Just like everything else in life that you dream of or wish for that you don't have a plan for, you just spend your time and your life dreaming and wishing instead of taking action. So what I wanted to do today was outline some steps that you can take to get to the point where you know that you are enough. So I want you to think about it kind of like a a number line, right? As a number line, a baseline where zero is where you feel worthless. Zero is where you have nothing to offer. And 10 is where you are more than enough. You're capable, you're confident, you're competent. You're able to do the things that you need to do because you know who you are. I like to look at it as getting to a point where you have, where you're able to accept who you are And you're able to love yourself for who you are, flaws and all. Because when I say getting to I am enough, I'm not saying getting to the point of being perfect. I'm not saying getting to the point of being above reproach, of making no mistakes. I'm not talking about flawless. I'm talking about self-acceptance. I'm talking about you recognizing and accepting who you are for who you are. And then learning to love yourself as you are. You know, we we buy things, we'll buy used things, right, on Facebook Marketplace, or you'll go to a thrift store, you'll go to Goodwill, whatever, and you buy things as is. You can even buy homes as is with no inspection, but you struggle to love yourself as is. You struggle to accept yourself as is, and that's what we need to change. And for so many people, the very foundation of that feeling of incompetence and worthlessness is self-judgment. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on, work our way from self-judgment and shame and guilt to self-acceptance. So the first thing I want to talk about is dealing with shame. Shame is really all about being seen. And what I mean by that is, You feel ashamed of something about yourself, something you are, that you want to hide from other people. You don't want other people to see it, to know about it. You do not want other people to be aware of the things for which you feel shame. But a lot of times what happens is you are holding on to judgment that you don't deserve. You're holding on to negative commentary that you've heard from other people that was unjust and unfounded. So you have to deal with your shame. And one way that you can deal with your shame is to find a way to forgive yourself. Now, I understand that there are things that we've done in our lives, some of us, for which there will never be forgiveness. And that's what we tell ourselves. 
Well, if that's how you feel, you still have to find a way to work through it. Because what I want you to understand is that when you go from feeling worthless to understanding that you are enough, it's not just about you. Your shame is not just about you. Your guilt, your worthlessness is not just about you. Everyone that knows you, loves you, and cares about you wants you to get over it. People who need you in their lives want you to get over it. They want you to be happy. They want you to work through the shame and the guilt. And so you have to put in the work to forgive yourself. And you got to look at your attributes. You got to look at the good and the bad about yourself and learn to recognize that some things are just how they are. It's just who you are. And so if you're not going to change it, then accept yourself for who you are, right? That's that saying, that cliche that we've all heard, learning to accept the things that we cannot change. You have to learn to accept yourself for who you are. So when you look in the mirror, if there are things that you don't like when you see yourself, you can change it or you can accept it. But to continue to judge yourself on those things keeps you in a state of shame. It keeps you in a state of doubting yourself, insulting yourself, and really holding yourself down. And again, when you take off those chains and elevate yourself, you're not just doing it for you. You're doing it for everyone that loves you and cares about you. Nobody who really who really values you wants you to live in that misery. And so when you decide to forgive yourself, when you decide to stand up and break out of those chains of self-doubt and break out of those chains of misery and guilt and shame, you're doing it for everyone in your life that values you and for everyone that you value, for everyone that you care about. Think about your significant other, your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your kids, your colleagues, coworkers. Everybody wants you to elevate your life. And so the truth is, you may have gotten really comfortable calling yourself less than, telling yourself that you're not smart enough, that you're not good enough, you're not strong enough. And you've gotten comfortable sitting in that space. Choosing to remain comfortable in your misery is selfish. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help anybody else. It doesn't put you in a position to help anybody else. And those who want to help you are unable to, because as long as you live in that misery, you are not open to receiving the love and the care and the concern that you deserve. So what you need to do is open yourself up by deciding that you're not going to live in that shame and that misery anymore. When you got involved in whatever you did, whether it was last week or years ago, in that moment, if you knew better, you probably would have done better. So much of shame is looking at ourselves and looking at our past and judging what we should have done differently. You should have done this. You should have done that. But isn't it likely? Isn't it very possible and even probable that in that moment you did the best that you could? And maybe... You acted in a way that was selfish. Maybe you acted in a way that was harmful towards others. But the information you have now was not available to you back then. And so you made a decision based on who you were at the time, the information and the resources you had at the time, the value of your relationships at that time. But you're not that person anymore. So acknowledge your growth. Acknowledge how your values have evolved and learn to accept that all you've done in the past, all the things that you're ashamed of, were merely you confirming your humanness. You're a person. You're an imperfect person. So am I. So is everybody else that we all know. And so the foundation of getting to I am enough is letting go of the past, letting go of the judgment, letting go of the self-doubt, letting go of the thoughts in your mind that are hurting you, letting go of your own thoughts that are keeping you down. You've made mistakes that you have not forgiven yourself for 
when the people that you harmed have forgiven themselves for. They've forgiven you. They've gotten over, but you're still holding on. And let me tell you a story. Let me give you an example of this. When I was in high school, there was this guy. There was this guy, Gabriel, who was about a year older than I am. And he was bullied. He was bullied by kids older than us. And so what happened was I wanted to be cool. I want to be with the cool kids. You know, you kind of have this thought process as, as a child or a young teenager that you can be one of the cool kids or one of the punks, right? Because you're not smart enough to realize that you actually have a lot more choices than that and that you are in control of who you are and your identity. And so I got involved in bullying him. And what happened was many years later, Gabriel and I connected on Facebook and we probably had 40 or 50 friends in common on Facebook. And what I did was I sent him a message. I reached out to Gabriel and I said, when we were in high school together, you were bullied a lot. And I am one of the people who bullied you. Now, the truth is, I was too scared to bully anybody on my own. I just jumped in with what I thought was the cool kids, the cool crowd. But I reached out to him and I acknowledged that I bullied him and I apologized to him. And his response was, don't even worry about that. We were just kids, man. That was 20 years ago. It's not even important. He wasn't thinking about it. I was thinking about it. I was holding on to that, to judge myself, to judge my past. He wasn't, he'd already let it go. And he confirmed for me that it was time for me to let it go. And the same goes with the mistakes that you've made in the past. So when we get to the point of overcoming our past and letting go, and I just described to you how to do it, but I recognize that it's not easy and it's not something that you do in two or three minutes. Forgiving yourself and letting go of the past takes time. Getting over your shame and guilt is a process. And if you want help with that, you can DM me, you can reach out to me, and we can have that conversation and I can help you through that process. But what I want to do is talk about the next steps, right? So I mentioned the baseline earlier where a zero is where you are feeling worthless and riddled with guilt and shame. And being a 10 is where you have learned to truly love yourself and accept who you are as a person. So now what I want you to do is to picture yourself, picture your mindset where you have let go of the past, you've let go of your judgment, you've let go of your shame, and now you're sitting there in a neutral state. So how do you elevate from that neutral state? Maybe a five on the baseline and move towards that 10. Move towards that self-love, that self-care, that self-acceptance. What you have to be able to do is to align your values, your thoughts, and your behaviors. Because the truth is there are behaviors that you have to undertake. There are actions that you must take. And so they have to align with your values. You can't just do random things. So what are your values? That's where the self-awareness comes in. What is important to you? Is it loyalty? Is it honesty? Is it work ethic? Is it humor? Is one of your values being a great friend, a great father or mother, a great spouse? If that is your value, as you go through the day, from the time you wake up to the time you end your day and lay your head down to sleep, have your thoughts been aligned with those values? If kindness is a value of yours, have you spent too much time being angry or retaliating against people or saying mean things, getting into arguments on social media with people you don't even know. So you don't even know what they're going through. And so you're missing opportunities to be kind because you're angry. If that's how you're behaving, those actions don't align with your values. So look at your values and do your thoughts throughout the day align with those values. 
And then do your actions align with those thoughts. When you've come from worthlessness to self-acceptance, you can answer those questions without judgment. You can say to yourself, today I was mean spirited, but that doesn't make me a mean person. I got angry more often than usual today, but I'm not an angry person because your actions are not your identity. So don't judge yourself. Hold yourself accountable. Today, I was rude in this situation. Maybe that means you go back and apologize to the person to whom you were rude. And you hold yourself accountable to say, I'm not going to do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to put more effort into living my values. And so that's holding yourself accountable. That's saying, I need to take action and make these changes. And the changes do not have to be revolutionary. The changes do not have to be overwhelming or monumental. They're incremental. One small change at a time. Reframing your thoughts, turning one negative thought into a positive thought. Rebutting negative opinions about yourself with positive ones. This is a process. This is a part of your journey. And so what you do is you apply the self-awareness and you evaluate. Evaluate how you've behaved, evaluate, do your actions align with your values? And if the answer is yes, acknowledge your effort, be proud of yourself and say, today I lived my values. And then you can accept that. And there are times where living your values may be difficult, where you want to lie, but honesty is your value. So you tell the truth. Or you want to be kind, but you feel threatened. So you have to put your guard up. That's okay. Part of being I am enough. Part of acknowledging yourself as more than enough. More than just a minimum standard. Is to give yourself compassion and empathy. So that you have an understanding of why maybe in this instance. Your attitude. And your actions did not align with your values. Because the truth is you're human. You're not going to outline your values as a set of rules where you're focused on compliance. We're focused on the quality of person that you are. And what helps you to elevate the quality of person that you are is to accept that you are a wonderful, beautiful, amazing person, regardless of the way that you evaluate yourself. Because just putting in the effort to tell if you're living your values really sets you apart from most people. People will say things like, I am who I am. I said what I said. I did what I did. But you, choosing to elevate yourself, have chosen to evaluate. You've chosen to apply self-awareness and recognize how you can continue to grow closer to living your values every day, moment to moment, thought to thought, breath to breath. And as long as you're putting in the work to live your values, then you can be proud of your effort. You don't have to judge your results because there's never going to be a day where you're perfect. But every day you can be enough because you said so, because you're worthy, you're deserving, and you're beautifully and wonderfully made And we, including me, are grateful that you're here. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. I hope that I provided some value to you. And just know that you can catch a replay anywhere that podcasts are available. Listen to the Cope Life podcast, where we strive for daily living of kindness, optimism, positivity, and empathy. Thank you very much. I appreciate you.